Just before we uh, go forward with uh, this week at a big game, but uh, for right now for you guys, 0-3 at home against conference opponents. Is it defense? Uh, is it uh, injuries? Combination of both. What do you feel like that's kind of that you're lacking against these conference opponents? You know, really it doesn't matter what we're lacking. It's it's, it's the outcome. And, and uh, uh, again, we don't point fingers. It's not uh, one area. You know, yes, we've had injuries, and, and yes, we haven't played well here or there. But uh, bottom line is, we've had opportunities to win all three games that we've played at home, and have failed to do so. And, and uh, uh, again, we'll just continue to work hard and 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 uh, try to get better as we move through this. It's, it's it's great in our conference where you have an opportunity for maybe a little redemption or a chance to play teams that you lost to the first time around, but. Uh, no, we just uh, we've been close, but that doesn't count. We uh, we have not uh, done what we need to do, and, and uh, for whatever reason, our second halves have not been good overall. For the most part, you know, we find ourselves behind. But the last two Saturdays, we've had ten point leads uh, at halftime, and come out in the second half and and give up a quick fourteen points and find ourselves down. So uh, again, this is a different football team than last year, and I, I feel like I need to keep reminding people of that because we have so many new. Uh, players in key roles, and and, uh, and yes, injuries have hit, so it's, it's changed us, you know, even more so. You lose Chase Garbachet, that's, you know, that changes who you are offensively. It changes that offensive identity that you have. But again, that's 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 us. Every other team, they have their own issues, uh, injuries being one of them, I'm sure. And so, we, you know, the key is you have to fight your way through it, find your way to, you know, find players that are ready to step up and roll, and, and uh, like I said, it, it, it close doesn't count in this game, and, and, and uh, so we're disappointed where we're at, three and three. I also think it, it, it kind of shows how far the program's come. We're at three and three. The, the, there, there is disappointment in, in, in that. So uh, we're, we're disappointed, but we're not. You know, there's no, there's no give up on this team. We'll go back to work today and uh, and and have a good practice. I, I anticipate and work as hard as we can, get ready for the trip down south. Um, when it is, if it's a close game at halftime or behind, those you know halftime adjustments are, are they adjustments that you're not seeing that are happening in the second half? Or is it things that you when it get through the, the, the players that have to, then you're not seeing those results. In I don't second. think it has anything to do with adjustments. It has, just has to do with our energy as we come out of the locker room. For some reason, uh, we uh, you know we, we've started with great energy. I guess Western Oregon is the exception to that. But but uh, we come out of the locker room and, and uh, whatever momentum we had built in the first half, whatever energy we you know put out in the first half, it seems to be lacking. You know as we come out of the locker room, and we're as coaches, we've met on that uh, at length. Uh, you know, since Saturday, to, okay, what what is going on? And we're talking about changing both the halftime routine that we follow, and also what we do when we get immediately back onto the field prior to the start of the second half. We have to look at everything because again, we have in all six games we've played, the opponent has scored first in the third quarter, uh, one one field goal and, and five touchdowns. You know, with those six opponents. So uh, again, but, you know, we've got to take a look at everything that's going on and try to identify. What is it that, that's, uh, you know, preventing us from coming out with the energy necessary? Uh, tough road trip uh, this week at Azusa. Obviously, you know what happened when the, the Cougars came up uh, here earlier in the season. Azusa uh, coming off a loss. Uh, so, so they're a team that they're beatable. Uh, but uh, what, what's the game plan, you know, face them uh, on their home field? This Be week? ourselves. Again, we've got to get back to just doing what has made us you know, and, and allowed us to be successful in the past. And, and uh, you go back to the first Azusa game, and, and uh, uh, you know, again, we're, we got the lead entering the fourth quarter. Uh, they score 14 in the, in the fourth quarter. We got the ball late, and we throw the interception for a touchdown. But uh, there were two very even teams on that night, uh, very even teams. Now, we're, you know, back then we had Chase Crevice. Uh We will be without him again Saturday. We had a healthy John Todd. Uh, you know, and, and the healthy Jaquan Gardner, and both of them are dealing with injuries right now and, and playing their way through it. So, yeah, it's, it's impacted us a little bit. But again, I, I would expect that, that with Azusa you have the same thing. When you're getting ready for the seventh game of the, of the season, you know, that's, that, that comes with that. that the, you know, there's going to be a lot of players that are banged up with bumps and bruises and have to play their way through, you know, whatever injuries they might have. So, Again, our players are excited. We have a lot of players from Southern California. They've always uh, looked at this game with great excitement because they get a chance to go back home, see family, have family and friends come out to watch them play. And so uh, our players will be ready for Saturday. 
the video you saw on Azusa, I'm guessing, over the weekend, the same Azusa team that you faced uh, earlier? Well, I remember the game one. I was very impressed with, with how much they had improved. Physically, you know, they, 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 the, one of the better-looking teams I've seen in the GNAC, just with their length, uh, their size, uh, and, and then certainly you see their athleticism. And, uh, again, they're, you know, they, uh, they played Colorado Mines last week and, and, and lost a very close game. Uh, could have easily and maybe even should have won that game. But Colorado Mines also has been a top 25 team the past few years. So again, this is uh, this is a team that leads the GNAC right now, and and uh, you know we look at it realistically that our postseason chances are gone, and probably our chances for league championship are gone. But there's still so much to play for. These kids enjoy playing with one another, and uh, like I said we'll be we'll, we'll get ourselves ready. Uh, when you say that chances of getting the conference title, but back on. Is still playing hard, still hopefully trying to make a factor in who is the conference champion. I mean, what is your guys' approach? Well, our approach is we want to know. It, it really is. It's win that week. You know, win that week. Who's the opponent? This week it's Azusa Pacific. So, okay, let's be want to know this week against Azusa Pacific. Not worry about anything good or bad that's happened prior to this game. Not worry about the schedule after this game. Really just focus on... First of all, ourselves, and, and continuing to come together as a football team, and that's been a work in progress. You know, as we move through this, it's it's, it's an entirely different team in so many ways than what we had, just with a veteran offensive group dealing with injuries and a young, inexperienced defensive group. And so, putting all those pieces together, but but our focus is to be want to know this week to get ready for a very very good Azusa Pacific team. Try to be at our best because we've. We haven't seen our best yet. We know that. I think our, the people that watch us closely know that. We haven't come close to you know playing a complete football game. We've shown uh, uh, at times that we can be very, very good. Uh, we've also shown at times that we can be very, very average or mistake prone. So we've got to eliminate those mistakes and find a way to to, to be at our best and, and, and put a full game together. We did talk about injuries, injury report this week, Gardner, Chase. Is, uh, what, what are their, their status? Uh, Chase is out and most likely out for the season. Uh, he has a hip injury. The MRI last week showed that uh, it, it, it's a likely surgical repair that will be needed with that. So uh, Chase Crebache, who means so much to us offensively, will be uh, will be playing without for the remainder of the season. The good thing is, is that by just playing the three games this year, he does qualify for a medical redshirt. So we'll add him to the 2017 uh, roster. Uh, Jaquan Gardner was able to get through the game, clearly not 100%. He probably was around 70%. He's better, uh, again, but not at full speed or full strength. Uh, John Todd played last week with the knee brace, just returned to practice in a limited role on Tuesday, Wednesday, and ended up playing more than we had anticipating on Saturday. But he's still recovering and adjusting to the brace and then recovering from the injury. Uh, Marjani Ellison will be out this week, uh, our other starting receiver. The receiver position has really been hit the hardest. You know, we lost Dylan Zubernick earlier. We lose Chase Gravache. We played without John Todd for a number of weeks. Sage Burmeister uh, is still dealing with his ankle injury that uh, he suffered early in the Shattered State game. So there's a, a number of players that uh, at that position that, that uh, you know, it's really impacted who we are offensively at all. We've had to move Richard Doctor from running back out to receiver. We're playing Nick Sexton, a freshman. Uh, Bryant Fisher, a JC transfer, got his first uh, playing time on Saturday. So it it, uh, uh, it it is truly a next man up mentality. That uh, okay, here's the deal, and we gotta, you know, you're looking deeper down that depth chart right now. But we're 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 healthy up front on the offensive line, and it's a very good offensive line. We're healthy at quarterback with with Robert Weber, and hopefully Jaquan is is closer to being the Jaquan that we we've seen you know, and, and, and recovering from his ankle injury. So, again, we've got to adapt to what our strengths are and, and uh, uh, put a plan together that will allow us to be, uh, you know, successful. All right, Coach. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Okay.